Thanks for watching our internet edition of Nightline. I'm Martin Bashir. Today we examine the Christian practice of speaking in tongues. Those outside the church often say it's nothing more than gibberish, but some Christians claim that it's the purest form of prayer beyond the constraints of normal language. Nightline's Vicky Mabry reports on the science of speaking in tongues. It is an ancient practice mentioned in the Bible. St. Paul called it speaking in the tongues of angels. Jesus' apostles were first said to do it at Pentecost. The technical term is glossolalia. Most people call it speaking in tongues. Oh. There's a vast number of people out there that because they did not personally experience it or have been taught against it all their lives, there's no way they have an ability to embrace it. So that's common. We're still mocked and made fun of. That's not stopping Pastor Jerry Stoltzfus or others in his congregation at the Freedom Valley Worship Center in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, from using what they say is a God-given gift. It's almost as if I'm able to tap into God's heart and what he wants. I get goosebumps, actually. You can feel him all around you, and you can feel him speaking through the words that you're saying. It almost sounds like a foreign language, but actually, those who speak in tongues are not saying anything in any known language. With the gift of tongues, I can trust the Holy Spirit to figure out what needs to be healed. He will use what sounds like gibberish, like any other language sounds like gibberish. Uh, he, he will interpret that for his purposes and his uses. We say things in our own English language, but speaking in tongues is a heavenly language that we're going to God and Jesus intercedes for us. They say they have no control over what comes out of their mouths, that they're swept up in a rush of ecstatic religious feeling, and that the Holy Spirit is speaking through them. Do you hear yourself? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think I sound like a total idiot. It's almost all in yellows and red here. At the University uh, of Pennsylvania, Dr. Andrew Newberg is looking for an explanation for what most regard as unexplainable. Right I mean, it's not language. It's not regular language, at least, that would normally activate the frontal lobe. Newberg is exploring the relationship between faith and science, studying what happens in the brain during the deepest moments of faith. If we're really going to look at this very, very powerful force in human history of religion and spirituality, I think we really have to take a look at how that affects our brain, what's changing or turning on or turning off in our brain. They're going to go around very fast right now. He's recently published a study of Americans speaking in tongues. Remarkably, he discovered that what's happening to them neurologically looks a lot like what they say is happening to them spiritually. Let's make sure we got your whole head in there. We asked Pastor Jerry Stoltzfus to come to the university to have his brain scanned while he speaks in tongues. This way, we could see the experiment in action. I don't think faith is anything to be afraid of from science. Science validates faith, so bring it on. Whatever the facts are, bring it on. Just go ahead and, and you can begin prayer. And First, he's told to pray in English. Father, I pray for each of the family members involved in this study. Grant them what they are looking for in their personal lives, for, for their vision and their potential. Then he's told to speak in tongues. <laughs> This is the first scan when he was in prayer, speaking in English. This is the second scan when he is praying in tongues. Pastor Stoltzfus's scan showed that his frontal lobe, the part of the brain that controls language, was active when he prayed in English, but for the most part it fell quiet when he prayed in tongues. When they're actually engaged in this whole a very intense spiritual practice, religious practice for them, their frontal lobes tend to go down in activity, but I think it's very consistent with the kind of experience that they have because they say that they're not in charge. They're, it's the voice of God, it's the Spirit of God that's moving through them. Dr. Newberg says the results were even more dramatic on subjects who were scanned without a nightline crew in the room, 
and who were not speaking in tongues on demand, as Jerry Stoltzfus had done. Study participants like Donna Morgan first listened to music, then went to where the spirit took them. When I heard about the study, I already knew within my spirit that it was going to be proven that there's a part of our brain that we have no control, that when the Holy Ghost is interceding for us, we're out of control. In earlier studies, Dr. Newberg looked at what happens in the brains of Buddhist monks meditating and Franciscan nuns praying. And it was noticeably different from what happens to tongue speakers. That's in fairly stark contrast to the people who are like the Buddhists and the Franciscan nuns who were in prayer because they were very intensely focused. And in those individuals, the frontal lobes actually increased activity. But Dr. Newberg isn't out to prove or disprove anything. He can tell you what happens in the brain, not why. Were you skeptical going into the studies? If by skeptical, the question is, is this a real phenomena, meaning that this is truly the voice of God speaking through them, that's a much more problematic question, I think, and something that I'm not sure that we've specifically answered simply by doing our study. But for those who believe, it doesn't matter if science can find the footprints of the Holy Spirit in their 21st century brain scans. When you've experienced this, you don't really care what anybody else thinks. It's personal for, in the first place. It is something between you and God. So we don't really care if it's validated or not, but it's fascinating when it is so that people that have thought we're crazy can have something to look at to say maybe we're not, we're still crazy, we're just not as crazy as they thought. Thank you so much. This is Vicki Mabry for Nightline in Philadelphia. The gray area where fact meets faith. And tonight on Nightline, The Secret, part self-help, part Da Vinci Code. The concept has sold millions of books and DVDs in a matter of months. But my colleague Cynthia McFadden spoke to some critics who say that it's not only deluded, it may be even dangerous. This secret gives you everything you want. Happiness, health, and wealth. Genius, call it a secret. Everybody wants to know a secret, <laughs> you know? Make it seem like the Da Vinci Code, which is about another Again, suppressed secret, secret, and you are guaranteed a hit, pretty much. A fact check on the secret. And that's today's Internet edition of Nightline. Thank you for downloading us. I'm Martin Bashir. For Cynthia, Terry Moran, and all of us at ABC News, Enjoy the rest of your day.